Ladies and gentlemen, you welcome to this edition of the news on Equinox Television, live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Bable Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, the United Nations System Resident Coordinator for Cameroon, Allegra Bauchi, says the situation of internally displaced persons, notably in the northwest and southwest regions of the country, has further been deteriorated even as back to school draws near many children notably students and pupils uh, living in very difficult conditions and back to school is going to be a difficult one as a result of the deteriorating situation while some senior division officers and other administrative authorities are intensifying back to school in the two anglophone regions of the country the senior division officer for the Indian Division for one Lawrence has warned all school officials in his area of command not to ask for a franc CV from any student or people who fails to pay the PT or the parent teachers association uh, fees and of course he said war betides whosoever does that Access to health care has become a near impossibility for several persons. A great proportion of the population of Anglophone Cameroon, especially those who are living in the hinterlands in the villages uh, that have not yet been emptied of its inhabitants by the Anglophone crisis. And this is because health services have been burnt down and others are targeted and some have simply shut their doors and now the military is bringing a medical aid to some uh, population some localities in the two anglophone regions of the country will take you to one of the localities in the Meme division southwest region of the country where the population uh, recently received medical aid from the motorized infantry battalion Derek Jato has more it needs not only courage but high level security preparations to carry out any outdoor activity in this war hit southwest region and the 21st motorized infantry brigade is getting set for a health rescue mission in manfi manual division the health condition of the population in that part of the country is seriously deteriorating by the day as most health centers are either bent down or targeted causing health workers to flee and leaving the already weakened population to nature to take its course. The team is leaving Boya and it is headed by Colonel Eyenga Severin, the commander of the 21st Motorized Infantry Brigade. The Boya Kumba and the Kumba Murphy corridors are home to separatist fighters. The elements are aware of these and they are dressed to the occasion destination it should be a village in Manfi, eight kilometers from Manfi main town and this is a should be village and her population in their hundreds they came for consultation and to be treated by these military doctors you don't call me so medical team for free i say free consultations Free medical assistance. They give medical freely. For these next two days, we will do two, maybe three or four types of consultation. Consultation and free treatment for common diseases, particularly malaria and typhoid and some rheumatism diseases. We, uh, we take care of sugar of, and high blood for patients for more than 40 years. We, we also take care of HIV patients. So the 21st Motorized Infantry Brigade Health Campaign has been taking this team from one town to another and the people of it should be are happy to have been remembered. We we'll be very, very grateful for seeing this medical team today. To be the hearer over the radio. May I several times, times 
help me give me some chocolate. And last today we don't see the team with, with our eyes. We'll be very grateful. Good morning. Good morning. Colonel Ayenga Severin, before leaving Manfi, told the population that the military is for their security. I don't come with my team. But I will say, we did with you now. I'm a day for you now. Yes. We did here now for protect you now. Amen. We did here now for protect you now. Even now that we will die. Amen. So if I say, we work hand in hand. Poor health, aggravated by the anglophone crisis, is also taking lives in this part of the country. Administrative authorities are intensifying back-to-school uh, campaigns as September 2nd draws near when students and pupils are expected to go back to school for the 2019-2020 academic year in the Indian Division, southwest region of the country. The senior division officer, Fawang Lawrence, has been on the ground doing everything possible to ensure that pupils and students within his area of command go to school come September 2nd and he has warned all administrative or school officials over sending pupils or students back home for failure to pay the Parent Teachers Association PTA fees. The Rijato once more. While recommending the Divisional Delegate of Secondary Education Time for actors to take action is now and Mr. Fowan Lawrence, the senior divisional officer from Jian Division, is aware of this. The meeting of this morning was purposely meant for, for us to see how classes can effectively start in Jian Division on the 2nd of September 2019. And we realized that despite the short notice, the hall was full to capacity. He says his back-to-school campaign drive is positively negotiating one of the last bands to the GD, September 2nd, 2019, Indian Division, his area of command. My sincere appreciation to some professors or head of school institutions for the laudable initiatives and actions they have already taken in preparation for school resumption. In what he considered as one of the last crucial meetings between the government and the academic stakeholders on the one hand and parents on the other, Mr. Fawang Lawrence, the senior divisional officer from Jian Division, brought in some modalities and the accompanying consequences if they are not respected to the latter. What is that? A principal, a head teacher of any school who will set away a student, a people, because that child has not paid duty at this. They have only paid it. Am I on the He will later reiterate the government security assurances. And then the government security assurances. I dare say security measures have been put in place. The government is much more determined to succeed this year because for two years now. The back to school campaign has been a hard nut to crack. And the United Nations System Coordinator in Cameroon, Allegra Bauchi, has indicated that the situation of internally displaced persons, hundreds of thousands of persons displaced by the Anglophone crisis, has continued deteriorating. Many of them are living in very difficult uh, conditions, and it's going to be definitely difficult for them to send their children to school come September 2nd. 2019 for the next academic year. She was speaking during a fact-finding mission to the Kumba District uh, Hospital that came under arson attack uh, recently and she was there to take stock of the situation and also to have first-hand information 
on the ground, notably concerning the consequences of the Anglophone crisis with regards to IDPs, in particular persons who have been displaced by the crisis. And she also indicated that there is a, a problem of resources, notably financial resources, to reach out to those, the hundreds of thousands of persons displaced by the Anglophone crisis. Take a listen to Allegra Bauchi. She is the coordinator of the United Nations system in Cameroon. Come to Kumba and we spent the morning here looking at uh, different projects of uh, humanitarian organizations and also trying to understand how the situation is evolving and what are the big challenges but also some of the things that are already in place. So after having We've spoken to the displaced people, we've met the displaced people, we've met uh, some of the beneficiaries of our projects, we've met a lot of partners, and it's clear that the situation is still very difficult. And, uh, and our, some of our, it's good to see some of the projects uh, in place, but we also hear from everyone that it's uh, the tip of the iceberg and a lot more is needed, uh, which means more partners, uh, more access, but also more resources, because we cannot do this unless we get more resources. Unfortunately, our appeal is still uh, very underfunded. We're 21% funded and we're close to September. Uh, so that's very worrying to me. And, uh, and coming here has just uh, given me more energy, you know, to, to go back and ask for more because we see that uh, we can help people. Uh, we have good projects on the ground uh, and, uh, and there's so many people that are in need. So there's really no reason for us to not receive more resources. Thank you. The Social Democratic Front, other political uh, parties and civil society organizations have been calling for a ceasefire in the two Anglophone regions of the Republic of Cameroon as the way out of the Anglophone crisis and also as an important step that's creating an enabling environment for pupils and students to go back to school for the next academic year. And now the same call is coming from United States senators who have called for an immediate ceasefire in the two crisis-stricken regions of President Paul B.S. country. They also called for a dialogue to start immediately. Details with for me, Armstrong Sander. In its resolution 292, the Senate of the United States of America, after examining the cause and degeneration of the Anglophone crisis and the socio-political and security atmosphere in Cameroon, called on the governments of Cameroon and armed separatists to agree an immediate ceasefire. The senators demand belligerent parties to hold violence, respect the rights of citizens and pursue an inclusive dialogue to resolve the worsening crisis in the English-speaking regions. The U.S. lawmakers in their findings concorded rights groups' reports of extrajudicial killings, torture, burning of villages and schools, arbitrary arrests and sexual abuse committed on the people of the Northwest and Southwest regions. Church. The representatives of the American people outrightly condemned these acts and raised the obligation to uphold human rights in the conflict in the Northwest and Southwest. The senators affirmed that the United States government continued to hold the government of Cameroon responsible for the upholding of the rights of all citizens regardless of their religious beliefs, political views or regions of residence. As a way forward, the United States demand Cameroon to initiate a credible, inclusive, good and full faith effort to work with religious, cultural and community leaders in the Anglophone regions and the Cameroonian diaspora to engage a meaningful dialogue possibly with an independent observer in a negotiation to find a non-violent solution to the Anglophone crisis. The voices of the American people demand Cameroon to promptly charge or release all those detained within the context of the Anglophone crisis, including Sisi Kwayuktabi and co-arrested in Nigeria, and ensure that any future detainees are treated with due process. 
a ceasefire, immediate and unconditional release of those detained in connection to the Anglophone crisis dialogue should start immediately. These are some of the issues that have been coming up again and again from national and international uh, institutions from other countries as far as the Anglophone crisis is concerned. But these are yet to be a reality in Cameroon. The ceasefire, for example, has not been um, heard by the Yaoundé administration who say, and of course that is a pri the Prime Minister who said recently in Bamenda uh, that the military uh, cannot drop their arms because they have to be there to continue protecting the population, to continue protecting the territorial integrity of Cameroon and so a bilateral ceasefire cannot hold. But the call keeps coming up again and again. And now we're talking about Sisiku, Ayuk Tabe and the other detainees of the Anglophone crisis, notably the leaders of the Anglophone struggle who were arrested in the Federal Republic of Nigeria and brought back into the country. They were at the military court today in the Yaoundé and the case uh, has prolonged and of course we are still waiting for the decision of the Yaoundé military court. It should be recalled that that case between Sisi Kuayuktabe and the other leaders of the Anglophone struggle and the state of Cameroon has been adjourned on several occasions. In the meantime, the back to school 2019-2020 academic year is adequately uh, being uh, prepared in other parts of the country, notably the Anglophone parts. And here in the littoral region, the stakeholders in the domain of basic education are doing everything possible to ensure a hitch free back to school and also cautioning parents not to register their children in clandestine schools that have been shut down. Details with Immaculate Fogwe. With the recent shutdown of clandestine schools in the Litura region and other parts of Cameroon, the issue of back to school comes September 2nd becomes very complicated for some parents who would have enrolled their children in some of the schools and others who are planning to do so for reasons of proximity to their areas of residence amongst other factors. During a back to school meeting in Douala, the Litura Regional Delegate of Basic Education urged parents to seek credible information on the schools where they intend enrolling their children in order not to be deceived. We have tried addressing the issue of clandestine institutions since the month of July. We are putting in our best to sensitize parents to carry out research in our different delegations about the school they want to register their children in. We have equally called on the proprietors of these clandestine institutions to follow the right procedures. But yet, we still have recalcitrants who do not respect orders. With the ongoing Anglophone crisis that has displaced a great number of children from the two English-speaking regions of the country, the regional delegate explains that measures have been put in place for these children to effectively kickstart school come September 2nd. All measures are prises and even sont encore en train d'être prises. Basic educational stakeholders from the four divisions that make up the Litoral region express signs of readiness for the next academic year. Coming up, Inosenazi takes us through the horrible roads in Isanja locality. It is in Mbam and uh, Kim Division. Details with this report. This is the Isanja Yoko stretch of road in the Mbaman Kim division of the Central Region, over some 100 kilometers. A veritable challenge for driving heroes. <laughs> the situation is more severe once night falls while you suffer a breakdown. It is with help of a torchlight that you struggle to repair your vehicle. The traditional heads of Isanja village, His Majesty Joseph Theophil Melem, counts the difficulties arresting his village. No electricity, no health center, and in case of an emergency, they are compelled to cover at least 15 kilometers and 17 kilometers north and south sections of the village. 
Having all these basic social amenities is a luxury. Children cover kilometers to find a stream where they can fetch water. Talking about education, this primary school in Isanja is to resume with just two structures with the roof of one already blown off. A situation not reassuring few days to back to school. Yes, the school, which was opened last academic year, has only one director and two classes to go operational this year, but no classrooms to host the peoples. In the agricultural domain, farmers in Isanja go in pains to evacuate their farm outputs. They wait for a length of time with hope to get a vehicle to transport them to urban centers. Isanja is the first village in the Yoko subdivision where municipal authorities have taken some actions. For instance, the creation of a commercial center to facilitate economic activities. Et là, nous sommes en train d'agrandir pour mettre, euh, construire 20 boutiques, un grand hangar qui va prendre 32 comptoirs pour pouvoir satisfaire tout le monde. In preview of a demographic boom, council authorities in Yoko at this point in time initiate a project to construct a water catchment as well as creation of a new locality where administrative services in the subdivision shall delocalize. However, Yoko is blessed with a highway leading to Lena which might in the short run attract development. From Isanja to Fumban in the west region of the Republic of Cameroon, where some inhabitants of that part of the country, notably traders, are lamenting over the devastating consequences of a recent decision taken by the council of that municipality. The council has sealed over 28 shops uh, that have been uh, sealed for varied uh, reasons and that decision is having adverse consequences on the inhabitants who are complaining while the council says that it is uh, trying to uh, restructure the town. We have details with Hermin Iluga. According to the council authorities, the intentions were declared since 2016 by the mayor of Fumban. It targeted ensuring an uplifted environment in Fumban. The local administrators decry a series of issues, notably haphazard construction, the non-respect of a safe environment, general public disorder amongst others. Le construction haphazard construction amongst Tout other public disorder. And contrary to street talks, the mayor is not seizing people's portions of land, but rather wants to put an end to the poor occupation of streets. In this line, shops were sealed and activities stayed on a standstill. According to persons whose shops have been sealed, the decision and actions taken on the field seems illogical. The shop owner says on the 18th of January 2019, the mayor asked them to quit the streets and they obeyed. But suddenly, after some time, agents of the municipality have ordered the sealing of their shops. The mayor receives us but says nothing. We are tired. We have children to feed and send to school. Though questioning the administrative actions, the technical department of the municipality reiterates only non-conformed shops have been sealed. If you verify, shops which weren't sealed were shops in conformity. And given that the mayor wants good construction, that's the reason why other has been put in place. And you know, others construct without land titles, and this is not good. The 
The victimized 28 shop owners say it is unfair to have been sealed since the 6th of August, with no updates given to them by the mayor of the Fumban Council. They say they have attempted moves towards the mayor's office to no avail, no updates. No concrete answers given, as it's now the wonder what the council expects them to do with your businesses closed, given that they have responsibilities with kids to also send to school. And that's all we prepared for you today. Thanks for staying with us.